was he upset about? Well, you didn't use the correct form of address, Jean. I mean, there are rules of debate, you know. Well, I thought I was keeping to them. Well, you can't just stand up and say, concerning the remarks of the stupid pillock on the other side. I know that. All I said was following the remarks of my honourable friend. What's wrong with that? Well, he's a QC, isn't he? So he's not just honourable, he's honourable and learned. Also, he's not your friend. He's on the other side. So he's not a friend, he's a member. Oh, I forgot. Yeah, if you can't tell your friends from your members, you'll never get on at all. So, instead of saying my honourable friend is talking out of the back of his trousers, what I really should have said was the honourable and learned member is talking out of the back of his trousers. Exactly. You see, politeness costs nothing. Aye, aye, talking about talking out the back of your trousers, here comes the foremost exponent of the art. <laughs> Or has this machine become uh, one of the comrades, Kenneth, or is it still available for public use? Hello, Godfrey. How's the queue jumping tendency? Oh, uh, busy, thank you. How's the honourable member for thrift and caber tossing? Oh, still taking the porridge. <laughs> <laughs> oh, have you got much, Jean? Well, go on, Godfrey, if that's all you've got. Oh, thank you. How kind. I've just got the one. Surprised to see you doing your own copying, Godfrey. Work experience, is it? <laughs> <laughs> My secretary's away. On maternity leave. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> I trust you're not suggesting that I had a hand in it. Uh, not a hand in it, no. <laughs> Just thought it might be a little return to Victorian values. Well, I know that the Labour Party isn't exactly famous for keeping its trousers on in the face of opportunity. Mm, <laughs> I've got free sex, drink and writing your memoirs. If one of them doesn't get you, another one will. Well, I hope something gets you before the memoirs do, Kenneth. Mm. Thank you. Go to the bar if you fancy a drink. Oh, do you actually buy? Oh, yes, but I'll make an exception in your case. <laughs> oh, um, Godfrey, you've forgotten your... <laughs> oh, gee, I'm so sorry. I think I've left something. Oh, oh yes, I have. There we are. Uh, so sorry, it's all yours. May I? Are you sure you finished? Oh yes, of course. One has so much on one's mind when one's secretary's away. <laughs> <laughs> ah, Jean. Ah, no. Now look, a nod's as good as well. Touch on the tiller. No more about it. Enough said. Yes. Sorry? <laughs> Talking out of the back of his trousers. Certain whiff of flatulence about it, isn't there? A touch on parliamentary. I mean, we're MPs, not your boss. Well, Norman, considering the honourable member had just referred to women MPs as a waste of time in knickers, I don't consider it unparliamentary at all. Oh, but that's different. Why is it different? Well, the speaker didn't hear that. Well, I heard it. Everyone else in the chamber heard it. Oh, I didn't say he hadn't heard it. I said he didn't hear it. The member wasn't on his feet when he said it. Had he been within handbagging distance, he'd have been on his back when he said it. Ah, but if you're not on your feet when you say it, the speaker may use discretion. He can cock a deafen. And he seems to cock a lot more deafens to men's indiscretions than he does to women's. Oh, not at all. He was good enough to ignore your remark, even though you were on your feet when you made it. Because he knew you'd been provoked by the member. Well, that's all right then, isn't it? Yes, as long as you don't do it again. I won't rise to the bait next time. Yes, that's right, Jean. That's the style. The only way to combat sexism in the house is to rise above it, let it all wash over you. <laughs> oh, hello, Dawn. I love you. Here's a dear. You want five minutes for your Uncle Norman, then? <laughs> so, uh, private and confidential, eh? Yes, both. And in the copier. So what did you do? I gave it back to him, of course. Yeah, well, that was the decent thing to do, eh? But I took a copy of it first. Oh, excellent. <laughs> Let's have a look at it. Yes, yeah, the minutes of a meeting. Oh, yes, yeah, the Tuesday Club. Yes, what is that, the Tuesday Club? Well, oh, it's a new right-wing Tory group. Break away from the Monday Club. They meet in one of the committee rooms every other Wednesday. <laughs> and what do they do, exactly? Oh, chew things over, you know, policy review. Sort of think tank. Yeah. And if Godfrey's anything to do with it, it'll be a very septic sort of think tank. <laughs> Proposals for further health service reform. Oh, that's a bit drastic, isn't it? Bring our own sheets into hospital. <laughs> Patients' relatives can then take them home and wash them. <laughs> what if you haven't got any relatives? What if you haven't got any sheets? Mm. Gets better. Read on. Oh, no. A hard charge for wheelchairs. But you do get unlimited mileage. Uh, improving the appointment system, though. That's long overdue. Yes, but what about the last paragraph? In view of the disappearance of hospital equipment, patients requiring to use bedpans could be asked to secure them by means of a small deposit. 
chuck it in the bin, Jean. No, you don't chuck political dynamite in the bin. It's a waste of a good explosion. Is that what you think it is? Well, it's a big embarrassment for the government, isn't it? Jean, this isn't the government. It's just a fringe group having a happy hour. When something like this falls into your hands, you have to use it. Yes, well, I'd be careful. You know the old proverb, beware of Greeks bearing gifts? Well, update it 2,000 years and it reads, beware of photocopiers bearing memos. A bit early in the day, isn't it, for classical illusions? Ah, uh, it's OK. I never have more than one before lunch. <laughs> well, I think this is too good a chance to miss. Do you think that'll do it? Well, I'm better at writing speeches than framing questions. Well, let's just talk it through. I'll ask the Minister if he is aware of the... What? The uh, new tide? Perhaps creeping might be better. Creeping? Hmm. Creeping tide. Yeah, creeping tide. It sort of sounds more slimy. Yes, it does, yes, yes. <laughs> Tides are better if they creep a bit. Yes, yes <laughs> creep. <laughs> creeping tide of selfishness and complacency. Can you have a tide of selfishness and complacency? Well, if Shakespeare can have a sea of troubles, I don't see why not. <laughs> Among some of his backbenchers, who seem to wish to turn the NHS into what? I can't say a pay-for-your-bedpan business, now can I? How about a pay-as-you-pee operation? No, I can't say that. Anyway, it sounds too much like P-A-Y-E. It is what they're proposing, and I'm sure it'd be a headline grabber. Yeah, I'm sure it would. Oh, I know. How about backbenchers who wish to charge patients 50 pence to spend a penny? Yeah. Yes. You don't think it's a bit tabloid, do you? No. Yes. Well, maybe we should work in something about bums on seats, too. No, we've got quite enough on that topic, Tim. Now, I will then wind up with, does the minister endorse these and other proposals, etc.? Right. 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 Now, I've tabled a question on NHS expenditure for starters, then I'll slip this in as a supplementary. But it is quite clear what I'm asking for, though, is it? Oh, yes. And I'm sure you'll probably get it, too. What? Trouble. <laughs> well, what do you think of that colour? Right now, Jeff, the only colour I can see is red, and I don't mean rose-coloured. Doesn't it make you so indignant? I didn't realise politicians got indignant. I thought politicians were what other people got indignant about. I go into the chamber and I ask my question. Is the minister aware of the creeping tide of self Ah, you should, should have said polluted tide. Pollution, it's very topical. You could have got them on two counts, then. Don't be pedantic. Legalistic. Irritating. Anyway, so you asked your question. Go on, what did the minister say? Surprise, surprise. The minister denies any such thinking exists as far as the NHS is concerned. Well, maybe that's true. I mean, you did say there were only six MPs in this Tuesday club. Let's face it, six nutters do not a government make, do they? In some cases, just one nutter is quite sufficient. Anyhow, I sit down and then Godfrey Egan gets up. Who? Oh, the oily one. Yes, you know, the well-known lubricant. He gets up on his hind legs and he asks the minister to deplore and condemn the unsubstantiated scaremongering by ill-informed members of the opposition. Uh, that was you, was it? Yes, and the minister agrees with him, surprise again. And there I am, with the very evidence in my hand that he left in the copier. And he is there, effectively denying any such document exists. Well, he sounds quite a good politician, then. <laughs> I don't see that telling whoppers to the nation with a straight face is exactly an accomplishment, is it? Well, it can't be as easy to do as it looks. Not convincingly. It's the same with lawyers. I've had to say a lot of things I don't personally believe in. Like what? Like... My client is innocent, Your Honour. Well, it's not exactly a lie. It's more a sort of um, professional fib. Oh, well, that's what it is, is it? Well, people are bound to be economical with the truth when we've got so little of it. Yes. Uh, do you tell me many professional fibs? Well, do you ever tell me any? No, of course not. Fine. So, that was the end of that, then, was it? Well, I presume so. Um, I walked out. Good for you. Keep your dignity. Don't stoop to their level. Th that is, I walked out after... After what? After I called Goffrey a... a liar. Did you? Yes. Oh, that's a nice colour. What's that? Uh, Tory blue. No, maybe not. <laughs> now, look, Jean, it's a simple matter of an apology, that's all. If it's a matter of an apology, Norman, it certainly isn't simple. It'll only take a minute in the chamber, if that. It only takes a second to shoot someone. That doesn't make it right. Besides, it's a matter of principle. Oh, no, not principle. Spare me that. 
I mean, we're trying to run a political party. We haven't got time for principles. Let's get re-elected first. We'll have some principles afterwards. Anyway, it's a question of privilege. MPs are not allowed to make offensive personal allusions about other members. I wasn't making offensive personal allusions. I simply called him a liar. That is the most offensive personal allusion you can make. Don't MPs tell lies? Well, of course they do. That's why they're so touchy about it. It's only people who wear glasses who don't like being caught four eyes, isn't it? I have got evidence. I can prove it. it. Makes no difference. Well, why? Well, it's not how things are done. You simply can't go calling other MPs liars just because they're not telling the truth. That's the kind of allegation that undermines people's faith in Parliament. Now, just let me get this straight. What you're saying is, it's perfectly all right for a member to go into the House and lie his head off, but it's all wrong for someone else to complain about it. No, not at all. But if you want to call someone a liar, you must do it in a parliamentary way. You know, employ circumlocutions. Oh, and what circumlocutions are currently looking for work? Well, you might say the honourable member is misinformed or appears not to have done his homework properly, that sort of thing. Oh, liar sounds much better. It's more succinct. Well, maybe so, but you can't say it. Well, I have. I know! And now you better apologise, because I want you back in that chamber for the debate on pregnancy care. It's a strong female issue, and we want a good showing of women on the floor. Will I need my leotard? The TV cameras are among us, Jean, and we want the nation to see who the Women's Party is. And Labour have more women MPs in the House than anyone. Norman, we've only got four more than the Tories. Don't slap yourself on the back too hard. All the more reason for you to be there on the day. In fact, it might be an idea if you and the others were to put your heads together and come up with some working proposals on the maternity issue. You know, something like, uh, an easier labour with labour, or socialism delivers. Something like that. Uh, I'll book a committee room for you. A small one will do, won't it? All right, I'll see what I can do. Well, there we are. So, it's a simple matter of apology, then. It's what? Oh, Jean. Oh, Goffrey. Got Matt? Yes. As a matter of fact, I should probably be using this copier right up to the next election. Ah. I've just got uh, the one letter, actually. Oh, where? Here. Sorry, where? Right here. Well, I'm sorry, Goffrey, I can't see it. Of course you can see it. Here, this. Right here. In front of your nose. Well, you can't deny the existence of a document which is staring you in the face. I don't see why not. You seem able to. That is totally different. Yes, I had a feeling it was going to be. Copying a person's private correspondence and using it for political ends is not ethical in my book. Well, getting up in Parliament and saying what is, isn't, when I have the evidence in my hand, is not ethical in my book. Well, then we obviously subscribe to a different book of the month clubs. Or different ethic of the month clubs. But what really puzzles me, Goffrey, is how I can possibly have copied a letter that you have told Parliament does not exist. I have no more to say on that matter, Jean. I shall simply await your apology for your unseemly conduct in the chamber. My unseemly conduct? Absolutely. That document was no more than the musings of a few people throwing around a few ideas, which you totally misrepresented. Oh, did I? Yes. As you know, I am not a malicious man. I don't expect a huge apology, not the full grovel and bootlick. <laughs> but Parliament is Parliament, tradition is tradition, and rules is rules. Oh, is they? Well, I don't like the rules. Then you shouldn't have played the game. I shall just await your apology, then. Well, I would advise you to continue breathing while doing so. <laughs> oh, well. Um, <laughs> lead us not into temptation, eh, Godfrey? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Jean. Ah, Tim. Did you manage to find anything? Uh, yes, I combed through a few back volumes of Hansard to see what I could get. Interesting reading it isn't, heavy going it is. Yes, and? Well, it all seems very arbitrary. Things banned in the past are completely inconsistent. For example, you can't call another MP a jackass, a swine, a stool pigeon, a rat, a dog, 
a uh, festering sore and um, <laughs> liar you know about, of course. To my cost, yes. But the good news is you'll probably get away with twit, ignoramus, <laughs> pompous garbage and uh, bird brain stick insect. <laughs> I must jot those down for future reference. Mm. And on a more moral plane, um, you can't call anyone a cheat, but you're on fairly solid ground with Twister. Yes, but did you find any form of words by which I can apologise without actually saying I'm sorry? Well, I did find something of interest. Uh, here. Oh, that's all right, is it? Yeah, apparently. Oh, good. Oh, and uh, would you do me 14 copies of that when you've got time? Right. Urgent? Uh, no. Right. Humble pie. Well, not so humble pie. Let's hope so. <laughs> well, I was an apology for an apology. That apology, Jean, I must say. Well, at least it was an apology, Norman, which was what you wanted. Well, nothing like saying you're sorry like you mean it. I mean, when you go into the confessional box, you're not supposed to come out smirking. Oh, I thought I was just meant to ask for forgiveness. I didn't realise I had to do penance as well. Well, I'm sorry you feel that way about it. Well, I'm sorry you didn't like my apology. All right, then. I accept your apology. I wasn't offering you one. Right. Now, don't forget, I expect to see you in the chamber for the maternity debate. Let's let the pregnant women of this country know that we realise who's responsible for the condition they're in. <laughs> Shall I um, sit in the background with a cushion up my jumper to show solidarity? <laughs> Oh, no, I don't think so. I mean, no one loves a donut when it's six months gone. <laughs> it's a nice idea, though. Keep thinking along those lines. Oh, hello, Claire Lovey. New frock, is it? Let's tidy. How was it again? I apologise to the honourable member and withdraw my remarks. I did not mean to say he was a liar. What I meant to say, of course, was that he is... A man of the utmost integrity. But what he said was a pack of flies. Well, <laughs> there is a difference. Yeah, only just. Well, you seem to have given the Rent Your Bedpan campaign a sound knock on the handle. Maxwell's little hammer's been having a bash at it, too. Really? Yeah, and some of the other ones. MPs go potty in chamber. Uh, <laughs> Times editorials aren't what they were. Still, I don't suppose we'll be hearing much about that one again. You know, it's funny. It's almost as if someone was sort of trying the idea out. You know, running it up the flagpole, see who salutes it. Mm, leaving it in the copier, see who finds it. <laughs> what? Well, if uh, no one had found it, they couldn't run it up the flagpole, could they? So they were just testing the waters? Mm, possibly. With my toes? And you suspected that all along? Mm, well... Well, a fine friend you are. Why didn't you tell me? To my recollection, I did. So, now these ideas have had a bad reception, they'll be forgotten. Well, it'll make a change from off-the-record briefings and broken tape recorders at number 11. And Goffrey was behind it. Yes, well, instrumental in it. I never knew people could be so devious. Well, I did. I just never thought they'd bother going to all the trouble. What are you doing? Seeing if any of these dirty shirts are clean enough to wear. <laughs> Leave a couple out. I'll take them home and do them. Oh, are you sure you don't mind? Uh, excuse me. Oh, hello, Tim. Um, you're copying. About the maternity stuff, do you have the original or do I? Well, I... No, I gave it to you, didn't I? Oh. I think I might have left it in the copier. Was there someone there waiting? Um, maybe Godfrey Egan? <laughs> Come in. Hello. Ah, oh, Jean. Um, are you busy? Oh, yes. Leisure is but a thing of memory when one's secretary is away. I could get a temp in, of course, but they're always getting lost. Well, um, I'm sorry to bother you. Oh, not at all. <clears throat> oh, thank you for your apology, by the way. How can I best describe it? Uh, not humble, exactly. More sort of grudging. My pleasure. Um, uh, Goffrey, I wonder... My secretary thinks he left something in the copier, and I believe you may have used it after him. I, I don't suppose you happen to find... Uh, something in it? Yes, because, I mean, um, if you did find something in it, well, there's nothing in it. Nothing in it? No, I, I mean, well, all it was was just a few ideas I'd been mulling over to improve the health service. Oh, what a coincidence. I was mulling over the very same thing recently. Uh, yes, I know. It's just that, um, taken out of context, some of these proposals could be made out to be a little... Extreme? Uh, possibly. Fatuous, perhaps? 
Totally downright stupid, even? Well, um, you see, they, they weren't really concrete proposals. They were more just... Um... Uh, still in the mix-up? Uh, yes. And you don't want people judging the chicken by the egg? Uh, quite. You'd rather it hatched first before letting the photographers in? Y yes. I, I mean, you know how easy it is to... Uh, exaggerate a viewpoint? Y yes. Well, well, I mean, it's all too simple, isn't it, to... Um... Make a well-intended suggestion sound like the musings of a bigoted moron? Quite. <laughs> I think I've squirmed enough, Godfrey. Oh, I thought another five minutes. <laughs> no, I am rather pressed. There it is, in this envelope. As I said before, my secretary's away, otherwise you would have had it sooner. Ah, uh, thank you. Uh, did you... Uh, take a copy. Jean, are you seriously questioning the probity of a fellow MP? No, Godfrey, I'm not questioning your probity. I'm just asking if you copied it. <laughs> Well, I think I can say honestly that I acted as any loyal MP with integrity would have done in similar circumstances if he had his party's interests at heart. Oh, I see. That's the way it is, is it? Yes, I'm afraid so. Well, you surprised me, Godfrey. I never thought you were the sort of person who would stoop to acting with integrity. Parliament, Jean. Parliament makes opportunists of us all. Absolutely ridiculed it. He just went to town on it. No, he didn't just go to town. He booked a hotel room and stayed overnight. Yes. Still, you've just got to be philosophical about it. Well, if it had been you who'd been made to look stupid, I probably could. But I could have had an entry into Burke's peerage on the strength of that exhibition. Well, on the grounds of natural nobility. No, on the grounds of looking a Burke. <laughs> I mean, all we suggested in those proposals was that women should have a wider choice in the kind of birth plan they wanted. Yes, quite right. And access to all the new techniques. Hospital, home birth, the Odent method. Who? You know, underwater. Well, in a bath. Oh, yes, babies with snorkels. <laughs> Don't you start. I had enough with Goffrey asking if midwives would have to buy their own aqualungs or would they get them on the NHS? <laughs> and what about the flippers? They'd look very nice with black tights. I'm glad you find it amusing. No, no, not at all. It's a very serious issue. I remember when our two were born. Yes, so do I. I was 12 hours in labour. You were three days in the pub. <laughs> yes, well, they didn't let men into the delivery room then. And it was women who kept us out, may I remind you? It's all right. Anyway, I didn't let him get away with it. I got up, I denounced their entire record on maternity care, and I denied any such proposals ever existed. Yes, but he had a copy of your proposals, didn't he? Well, he'd certainly read them, yes. I see. So you misled Parliament, sort of lied to it in a way? No, no, of course I didn't. No, not at all. I... Yes? I, um... Well, I was merely uh, defending my corner. I mean, it, it, it wasn't lies, it was uh, politics. Isn't it, though? What's this? What? These shirts, they're not mine. Oh, uh, uh no, they're a colleague's. Whose? What are they doing here? Um, they're, uh, someone in the house, uh, Ken's. Well, why couldn't he do them? Well, uh, he's on his own. He's rather busy. Yeah, well, so am I. I'm busy doing his laundry. <laughs> do you mean you're bringing someone else's clothes home for me to wash? No, of course not. No. He gave them to me for the jumble, and I thought they should go in the wash first. I see. Oh, well. They even look past the jumble to me. I tell you what, we'll use them for dusters. 